Some people are just born lucky. So lucky, in fact, that they can just walk around their own home and suddenly find a whole new world hidden in it, just like that. From the discovery of the drug that saved millions of lives to the little blue pill that made a lot of guys smile again, here's 20 incredible discoveries made by accident. <sighs> Number 20. Penicillin. As one of the first antibiotics ever discovered, penicillin marked a major turning point in human history. The story is as follows. In 1928, while on a call as a bacteriologist at London's St. Mary's Hospital, Dr. Alexander Fleming took a summer vacation to Scotland, returning to a cluttered lab and an unpleasant surprise. Penicillin notatum, a type of mold, has fouled up Dr. Fleming's petri dishes. He was, however, shocked to observe that the mold had prevented normal staphylococci growth when he examined the dishes under the microscope. Amazingly, he found something in the penicillin mold that not only inhibited bacterial growth, but could also be utilized to treat infectious illnesses. In the second penicillin proved its mettle. Infections rather than the physical wounds themselves have historically been the leading cause of death throughout wars. An estimated 18% of male service members lost their lives to bacterial illnesses during But due to the widespread usage of penicillin during World that percentage fell to below 1%. U.S. pharmaceutical firms produce 650 billion units every month at the war's end, a figure that directly contributed to the survival of tens of millions of people. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or the centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Ronnie was one of those guys who always had complained about not being able to sleep enough. He thought that there were rats living in his house somewhere, keeping him up at night. But the rat catcher came, and there were no rats to be found. And still, there were these noises at night. So Ronnie decided to just do something about it one night, and he started digging under his floor, where it seemed like the rats must have been living. Once he got partially down, he discovered something entirely different. A crime gang was running their whole operation in a secret city right under his house. He knocked down a hole in his house, and he found an entire hidden city. He was able to call the cops, and they took the gang away, and now Ronnie has his own underground city. Do you think there's a lot of people living underground? What would be the hardest thing about an underground life? Comment down below with the hashtag rare topic and let us know what you think about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19, Viagra. Viagra, the best-selling drug for erectile dysfunction made by Pfizer, came out on the market in 1998. In the last 20 years, it's become very common. 62 million men all over the world have used the drug. The US military spends 41.6 million on it every year. And since 2012, the US, Mexico, and Canada have spent about $1.4 billion on it every year. These numbers are expected to go down in the coming years though. Pfizer's patent on the drug ran out in 2020. Even though the drug is very popular, the scientists who found it weren't even looking for it in the first place. Sildenafil, which is the main ingredient in Viagra, was first made to treat heart problems. It was meant to make the blood vessels in the heart wider by blocking a protein called PDE5. In tests on animals, it seemed to work okay. There was evidence that it stopped PDE5 from working, and the animals didn't seem to be having side effects. So it was put into a phase one clinical trial in the beginning of the 1990s to see if people could handle the new compound. Everything seemed to be going well, but when the nurses came back to check on the men in the study, they saw something strange. The sildenafil was working, but it was working in the wrong place, a little bit lower in the body than they were hoping for. And so the so-called potency pill came into being. Number 18, plastic. Plastics are everywhere. We sleep on pillows filled with plastic, brush our teeth with plastic toothbrushes, type on plastic keyboards, eat and drink plastic from containers. It's practically impossible to go through a day without coming into contact with plastic in more than just some way, probably. Plastic's a general term for stuff that can be shaped and molded when it's heated and pressed. By the middle of the 19th century, some materials that came from animals were getting harder to find. This was because factories were producing more and more stuff. In 1907, Leo Bakelin, a marketer 
and chemist from Belgium, made the first plastic that was made from chemicals. James Swinburne, who was from Scotland, was just one day behind him in getting to the patent office. Under heat and pressure, Bakelin mixed two chemicals, formaldehyde and phenol, to make his new material, which he called Bakelite. The age of plastics really started with the creation of Bakelite. Bakelite was the first kind of plastic that didn't change shape when heated. They used Bakelite to make radios, phones, and electrical insulators because it was good at keeping heat and electricity out. Soon, it was used in almost every part of every industry. Number 17. The Microwave As world was coming to an end, engineer Percy Spencer was trying to find new ways to power radar equipment. By 1939, Spencer was one of the most knowledgeable people in the whole world when it came to radar tubes. Spencer was the head of the Power Tube Division at Raytheon, a company that did work for the U.S. Department of Defense. Spencer came up with a better way to produce magnetrons while working at Raytheon. This made it possible to make 2,600 magnetrons per day instead of just 100. Spencer was building magnetrons one day when he noticed the candy bar in his pocket melted. He was standing in front of an active radar set at the time. Spencer wasn't the first person to notice this, but he was the first person to look into it further. And he discovered that microwaves were cooking the candy. He decided to try things out with other food, like popcorn kernels, which led to the first microwaved popcorn in the whole world. In another experiment, an egg was put in a tea kettle, and the magnetron was put right above it. One of his coworkers was looking in the kettle to see what was going on, and the egg blew up in his face. Spencer then made the first real microwave oven by putting a high-density electromagnetic field generator inside a metal box. The magnetron sent microwaves into the metal box, which stopped them from getting out. This made it possible to do experiments in a safe and controlled way. He then put different foods in the box and watched what happened and kept track of the temperatures. On October 8th of 1945, Raytheon got a U.S. patent for a microwave cooking oven that would be called the Radar Range. In 1947, the first microwave oven made for sale was about 6 feet tall, weighed about 750 pounds, and cost about $5,000, which in today's money is about $60,678. Number 16. Vaseline. Robert Cheesebra was an American chemist who discovered petroleum jelly. He also started the Cheesebra Manufacturing Company. Cheesebra started out as a chemist who separated kerosene from sperm whale oil. Since his work was no longer needed after the discovery of petroleum in Titusville, Pennsylvania, he went there to find out what new materials could be made from the new fuel. As he walked around the oil field, he learned about rod wax, which is also called petroleum jelly. It looks like jelly, and the pumping equipment had to be cleaned often, as this stuff would get everywhere. Cheesebro was told that the jelly was an annoying byproduct, except when someone was hurt. If it was rubbed on a wound, it would make the pain go away and help the wound heal faster. So he had a eureka moment, and soon sold the jelly under the name Vaseline. In 1875, he started the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, which is now one of the biggest companies that makes products for personal care. In 1872, Cheesebro got a patent for petroleum jelly. By 1874, shops sold more than 1,400 jars of Vaseline every day. In reality, it doesn't heal cuts and burns. Instead, what the jelly does is form a layer that keeps dirt out. Infected open wounds were a major cause of death and disease in his time, and it keeps the moisture in. He also gave away free samples, which was one of the first times anyone had ever done that. Cheesebro lived to be 96 years old, and he said that he ate a spoonful of Vaseline every day because he believed in it so much. I wish there was some way of empirically knowing if he lived to be 96 years old because the Vaseline that he ingested helped helped extend his life, or if he would have lived to have been 105 years old, but eating all that damn Vaseline shortened it down to 96. Number 15. Strikeable Match The friction match was invented by an Englishman named John Walker. He became interested in trying to find a way to strike a light quickly. Yeah, I feel you bro, 420, let's get it going. There's already a few chemical mixtures that could be set on fire by a sudden explosion, but no way had been found to transfer the flame to something that burns slowly. 
like wood. When Walker was making a mixture to light a fire, a match that had been dipped in it accidentally caught fire when it rubbed against the hearth. He saw right away how useful the discovery could be and started making friction matches. They were made of wooden splints or cardboard sticks covered with sulfur and tipped with a mixture of sulfide of animity, chlorate of potash, and gum. The sulfur helped the flame reach the wood. One shilling was the price of a box of 50 matches. Each box came with a piece of folded sandpaper that the match had to be dragged through to get lit. Haha, oh, but I don't even need sandpaper to get lit, bro. Number 14. Gunpowder. Saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal were first mixed together to make gunpowder, as it came to be called, in medieval China. To be precise, it was a group of Chinese monks who found the technology in the 9th century CE, when they were looking for an elixir that would make them live forever, which is kind of ironic when you consider what gunpowder ended up being mainly used for. Saltpeter, the most important ingredient, had been used in China as a medicine since the late centuries BCE. It was found to be flammable, so it was also used in war. Soon the Mongols became known as an ambitious empire-building people. Through their invasions and conquests, gunpowder spread to the rest of the world. It is known that the technology had made it to the Middle East by the 13th century CE, where it would have been used by both traders and crusaders. At this time, the main problem with gunpowder was that the ingredients had to be measured out just right for the mixture to light and explode. So the technology wasn't so much knowing what materials were needed as it was knowing the exact formula. As the European powers grew in the early modern period, saltpeter became the most important resource, so it was in high demand. Bad news for places like India, which had tons of the stuff, because the French, British, and all the rest of Europe were pretty soon inviting themselves over to get some of that sweet, sweet saltpeter. Number 13. Mauve. Sir William Henry Perkin was a British chemist and businessman. He was best known for accidentally making the first commercial synthetic organic dye, also known as mauveine, and in the process, giving the world a fairly boring new color. Even though he failed to find a medicine to treat malaria, which is what he had set out to do as a teenager, he was successful in the field of dyes after making his first discovery when he was just 18 years old. During the Easter break of 1856, Perkin did some malaria cure experiments in the rudimentary lab in his apartment on the top floor of his home in London. Here is where he made one of his most important discoveries completely accidentally that aniline could be partially changed into a rough mixture that, when extracted with alcohol, made a substance with a deep purple color. At the time, all dyes used to color cloth were made from natural materials. Many of these dyes were expensive and hard to get, and many of them didn't last very long either. Since ancient times, the color purple has been seen as a sign of wealth and status. It was also very expensive and difficult to make. Perkins Mauve was less expensive than natural purple dyes, and it became so popular that English comedians started making jokes about the Mauve measles. And so, Mauve was born, making Perkins extremely rich in the process. Number 12. Cornflakes. Dr. John Harvey Kellogg was an American doctor, nutritionalist, inventor, and health activist. And as you might have guessed from the name, he came up with the idea for cornflakes. He was in charge of the Battle Creek Sanitarium in Michigan, which was a well-known health resort started by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Kellogg took care of both rich people and poor people who couldn't pay for other hospitals. But while this charitable side was admirable, he also had a dark side. Kellogg was racist as hell. He hated race mixing, and he thought that people with mental disabilities should be sterilized. Kellogg also thought that people's physical, emotional, and spiritual health were negatively impacted by sex. He didn't have relations with anyone, and all of his children were adopted. He thought that foods with certain flavors or seasonings actually increased sex drive, and that plain foods like cereals and nuts could help decrease it. One night, John had a dream about a plain wheat breakfast, and he rolled a batch up with utensils from his wife's kitchen and started eating these sexless wheat flaps. However, on one occasion, Kellogg forgot to throw away a batch of wheat berry dough after he was called away. The next morning, instead of throwing it away, he put the batch through kitchen rollers to flatten it out, and was surprised to see thin flakes that could be baked coming out the other end. So flaked cereal was born, but only with wheat for now. Later he tried it with corn, and that was the last step in making the famous recipe. 
Kellogg's given me Henry Ford vibes. I don't know how it took so long for me to learn about how many masters of American industry were straight up bigots and into eugenics. Gnarly. Number 11, Teflon. People often think that the nonstick coating known as Teflon came about as a result of NASA's experiments in space. In fact, a scientist named Roy Plunkett made the first Teflon when he was experimenting with CFC gases to make a new refrigerant. Plunkett put cylinders of a gas called tetrafluoroethylene, aka TFE, in dry ice so they wouldn't explode in the lab. When he went to use the gas, he found waxy white flakes in its place. This new material was very stable and very slippery. It could stand up to heat, water, acid, and just about anything else that he could throw at it, and he knew he was onto something, but he didn't know exactly what. The first nonstick pan wasn't made until French engineer Marc Gregory figured out how to bond Teflon to aluminum. Soon after, the brand Teflon came out, and DuPont had a very successful product on their hands. It's best known for being used to make nonstick coatings for frying pans, but it's also used as a coating for medical and healthcare applications, among hundreds of other uses. But Teflon has been shown to be dangerous in recent years, and DuPont has lost billions of dollars because of lawsuits filed by people who have been made incredibly sick from exposure to it. Number 10. Pacemaker. In 1960, researchers made the first heart pacemaker that worked well in humans. Many people with irregular heartbeats could finally avoid a condition that could be life-threatening, all thanks to this invention. Wilson Great Bach was trying to make a circuit that could record fast heartbeats, but he pulled out a 1 mega ohm resistor instead of the 10,000 mega ohm resistor he was supposed to use. The finished product pulsed for 1.8 milliseconds, stopped for one second, and then pulsed again. It was easy for him to recognize this pattern as the steady beat of a heart at rest. In 1960, a 77-year-old man got the first successful pacemaker. He lived for another 18 months after the device was put in. Nine more people got pacemakers that year, and some of them lived for more than 20 years after the surgery. The pacemaker that Great Bach made was the first one to be sold to the public. And now, more than 3 million people around the world have pacemakers in their hearts. Number 9. Radio Astronomy Radio astronomy both started by accident and made its most important discovery by accident. Carl Jansky was an engineer who looked into how phone lines got messed up by interference. Radio astronomy began when it was discovered that the strange signals causing weird connections over the telephone came from space. And so soon we were able to make readings of the universe by measuring radio waves. Then radio engineers Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson were also looking into a persistent hiss 30 years later that kept showing up in the radio astronomy equipment. They had found the last echo of the Big Bang, which is now called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, aka the CMB. After eliminating all possible noise sources like pigeon droppings on the antenna, CMB was finally found to be the cause of the noise. This was a very important piece of evidence for the Big Bang Theory. Measurements of the redshifts of supernova have since shown that the expansion of the universe is, in fact, speeding up. This is due to a phenomenon called dark energy, which remains extremely mysterious, but maybe you'll be the one who accidentally unlocks its secrets one day. Or even just the person that comes up with a better name for it. We don't know that it's energy, we don't know that it's dark, we just literally don't know anything about it, and so we called it dark energy. Number 8. X-ray. In 1895, physicist Wilhelm Röntgen was hard at work in his lab in the University of Würzburg, studying cathode rays. Suddenly, he saw a flicker on the screen made up of barium plantinocyanide. When he then saw a handful of bones, he was shocked. Some mysterious thing was moving through the air and through his body, making his bones cast shadows on the dimly glowing screen. Soon scientists all over the world were able to make x-rays in their own labs. The X in their name stood for unknown. Within 20 years, x-rays were being used in medicine in amazing ways. Before 1895, x-rays were just an unidentified type of radiation coming from experimental discharge tubes. Scientists looking into the cathode rays that these tubes made, which are energetic electron beams that were first seen in 1869, recorded them. 
When Röntgen took a picture of his wife's hand on a photographic plate made by x-rays, he found out that they could be used in medicine. The picture of his wife's hand was the first x-ray picture of a part of a human body. She said, I have seen my death when she saw the picture. Kinda creepy. Röntgen's discovery earned him the first ever Nobel Prize in physics. Number 7. Saccharin Surely, always washing your hands is one of the most important rules in chemistry. Back in 1878, Konstantin Feldberg didn't follow strict hygiene rules, which is good news for those of us who like sweets. After working in his lab at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, hoping to find new ways to use coal tar, he went home to eat his dinner, which he found to be very sweet. He ran back to his lab and tasted the contents of every evaporating dish and beaker until he found the sweetener that we now called saccharin. He was lucky that none of the other liquids he tried were poisonous. Even though saccharin was put on the market soon after it was found, it wasn't widely used until sugar ran out during World War <laughs> Then dieters in the 1960s and 70s made it even more popular, since saccharin has no calories and still makes things taste sweet. Only more recently have we learned that in terms of weight loss and overall health, these fake sugars aren't necessarily scot-free trade-offs. Number 6. Superglue during World War II, Eastman Kodak chemist Harry Coover led a group that attempted to make a clear plastic that could be used to make transparent gun sights. One failed attempt made a gloop that would stick to everything it touched. Anyone who's ever gotten superglue on their hands will know what this is like. The team had made something that's called a cyanoacrylate. Coover soon found out that cyanoacrylates had the strange property of quickly polymerizing or sticking together when they're near water. Here, he realized, was an incredibly strong glue that didn't need heat or pressure to work. There are lots of stories about how superglue was invented on the battlefields of And even though a lot of myths about it during the war are true, it was used to help heal soldiers' wounds during the Vietnam War. By the 1970s, it was being used on all seven continents. Since superglue was first made, the formula has changed very little. However, stronger versions have been made that are strong enough to glue chairs to the ceiling. No matter how it's made, superglue has many uses besides just sticking stuff together. Number 5. Dynamite in 1846, an Italian chemist named Ascano Soberero was the first person to make nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is very volatile when it's in its liquid form. Swede Alfred Nobel knew this, and in 1866, he found that nitroglycerin and silica could be mixed to make dynamite, a paste that could be molded. One thing that made dynamite better than nitroglycerin was that it could be made into a cylinder that could fit into the holes that were drilled for mining. In 1863, Nobel made the Nobel Patent Detonator, also called a blasting cap, which was used to set off nitroglycerin. Instead of heat, the detonator used a strong shock to set off the explosives. The first factory to make nitroglycerin and dynamite was built by the Nobel Company. As a safe alternative to black powder and nitroglycerin, dynamite quickly became used after it was invented. Nobel was later moved to leave his fortune to the Nobel Prize Institution, which would give an award every year to the person who conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. This is because in 1888, when his brother Ludwig died, several newspapers made a mistake and reported that Alfred had died. One French newspaper told him he was wrong for inventing dynamite. The death notice said, the merchant of death is dead. When Nobel read the obituary, he was shocked that this was how people would remember him. So he gave most of his money to start the Nobel Prize because he wanted to leave behind a better legacy. Number four, Laminated Glass by Edouard Benedictus. Edouard Benedictus was a French chemist, inventor, painter, composer, bookbinder, textile designer, and just kinda all-around smart guy. In 1903, he was working on one of his many projects when something very important happened. Benedictus noticed that something strange happened when a glass beaker was knocked over and didn't break. After investigating, he found out that the flask in question had previously held cellulose nitrate, which is also known as liquid plastic. Our hero worked all night to create an unbreakable glass, and he was inspired by a sandwich, a kind of plastic sandwich, I guess, which led him to put two layers of glass together with a thin layer of plastic in between. This was the first shatterproof windshield. And it's all because of a clumsy mistake followed by some scientific thinking. Every day, shatterproof glass saves thousands of lives all over the world. Number three, Coca-Cola. 
In the 1880s, miracle elixirs were all the rage, and pharmacists from all over the U.S. made cures for every kind of illness that you could think of. John Pemberton, a pharmacist in Atlanta, took advantage of the trend by selling a mix called French Wine Coca that was said to help with headaches and nervous disorders. <laughs> Atlanta, however, banned the sale of alcohol in 1885, which hurt Pemberton's business, big time. Instead of selling wine, he made a coca-based syrup that could be mixed with carbonated water and consumed as a soda. He chose the name Coca-Cola for his new brain tonic. At first, it was sold as a, quote, temperance drink. The name of the drink comes from the coca leaves and the cola nuts that were made to make it. So Coca-Cola's main ingredients when it first came out were cocaine and caffeine which was probably not what the temperance movement had in mind as a replacement for beer. After 1904, Coca-Cola stopped using fresh coca leaves and started using spent leaves, which only had trace amounts of cocaine left over from the process of extracting cocaine from the leaves. Since 1929, Coca-Cola has used a coca leaf extract that doesn't have any cocaine in it, which is a little bit disappointing, if not understandable. Hearing about this sort of stuff just makes me think of the logic of reefer madness while just drinking cocaine back because, like, you know, that's good. Number two, Velcro. George de Mistral, a Swiss engineer, was hunting in the Alps with his dog when he saw burrs stick to the dog's fur. Mestral wanted to know what makes the burrs so sticky, so he put one under a microscope and he looked at the tiny hooks that let it stick to stuff like fur and fabric. Mestral tried out different kinds of fabrics for years before he came up with Velcro, which he then patented. Interestingly, even though the technology was useful immediately, it really took off, so to speak, when the Apollo astronauts used Velcro to keep things in place in space. Over time, skiers saw that a Velcro suit was easier to put on and take off and had some amazing benefits. Before long, Velcro was everywhere, and it's still made by the same company today. Number one, insulin. Before insulin was discovered in 1921, people with diabetes didn't live long and doctors couldn't do much to help them. The best way to treat people with diabetes was to put them on a very strict diet with very few carbs. This might give people a few more years, but it wouldn't save them. Some diets gave people as few as 450 calories a day, which sometimes made them so hungry they died from that. In 1889, two German scientists, Oskar Minikowski and Joseph von Meering, found that removing a dog's pancreas gland caused the dog to get diabetes and die soon after. This made them think that pancreatic substances, i.e. insulin, were made in the pancreas. Later, researchers focused on the islets of Langerhans, which is a fancy name for clusters of specialized cells in the pancreas. He chose the name insulin for this chemical, which comes from the Latin word insula, which means island. Then what happened? Something that is truly amazing. In 1921, a young surgeon named Frederick Banting and his assistant Charles Best figured out how to take insulin out of a dog's pancreas. Colleagues who were skeptical said that the stuff looked like, quote, thick brown muck, but they had no idea that this would give millions of people with diabetes life and hope. Leonard Thompson, a 14-year-old boy with diabetes who was dying in a Toronto hospital in January of 1922, was the first person to get an insulin shot. Within 24 hours, Leonard's blood glucose levels went from dangerously high to almost normal. The news about insulin spread like wildfire all over the world. In 1923, Banting, MacLeod, Best, and Collip all received the Nobel Prize in medicine. Which is your favorite accidental invention on our list? What would life be like without any of these discoveries that we just talked about? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.